This week on Let's Make It, we're going to teach the Arduino how to send out our messages using Morse code. Hello, welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. This week, it's a little bit simpler than the past weeks. We're going to have a little bit of fun as well. Should be a lot shorter this week. This week, actually, I'm going to see if you can guess what we're going to do. Let me go over to the Arduino. All right, this is back. Who remembers what this means? I don't want to keep you hanging for very long. It's actually SOS, and it's in Morse code. This week, we are going to build some projects in the, with the Arduino for sending out Morse code. And the first one we're going to look at is the one you just saw running. It just constantly loops around sending SOS, Save Our Souls, or the Come Save Us, uh, one that everybody kind of knows. Uh, growing up as a kid, you probably learned the SOS signal, you know, the dot, 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 dot. So almost everybody knows what SOS means. But we're going to go through the program with the Arduino. And it's actually a fairly simple program for the SOS. And then we're going to make it a little more complicated where you can send it your own text to send out your own message. So first, let's go look at the Arduino again. And we're going to walk up, talk about how I have it set up. because it's, it's very simple, but I want to make sure everything's uh, clear here. So in the Arduino right now, we have the Arduino. And I have the Leonardo right here. And you'll see right here that the, the LED for pin 13 is blinking. So all I've done is I've wired up pin 13 to this LED so it's a little bit more obvious. And uh, looking at the camera, it's a much more obvious to you than it is to me because you see the bright flashing, which is good. That's what you want with SOS signal, right? But I'll tell you in the room, it's not that, not that bright. So what I basically have is a pin going to ground and going right here up this side to ground. And then I have a, a pin, a wire going from pin 13 over to this 10K resistor, which then goes into the other side of the LED, and this other side of the LED is into ground. So it's a very simple circuit. And again, I only did this just for the fact that I, rather than looking at this tiny little LED that's right here blinking, this is a lot more obvious as to what's happening. So that's all there is to it. So this week, it's basically looking through the programming more than anything. We'll go back to the board after we start sending it text, and we'll show you what it's doing to the board and the output as well. But if you don't know Morse code, it's not really going to mean much to you. And I'll tell you, I don't know Morse code. In fact, I had to go look up what Morse code was for this the second version of the program tonight because I don't know Morse code, and I had to go out and research it. So the first thing I want to do is let's go over and walk through the program that we have. Let me get it up here. And I want to go to the program. And this is our let's make it SOS code right here. Here's the SOS code. And we're going to start after our comments right here. And the top. Where's the top? There it is. OK. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use pin 13. So I set my constant. The LED pin I'm going to use is pin 13 right here. So I set my constant right there. And then I come down here. And so in between each dot basically is two uh, different speeds. You got the dot, which is a dot, dot, dot really fast. And you got the dash, which is the way I'm doing it is basically three times the length of the dot. So what I want is the dot to be 200 milliseconds in length. So I set this parameter as dot delay equals 200, and you'll see later on how we use that. Now in this very first program, it's going to be a lot simpler than the second program where we got to you know, look at what was sent to it. But the first thing I do in setup, the only thing I need to do in setup in this program is actually set the pin to output. So I'm basically setting pin 13 to output right here. And then in my loop, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to send out dot, 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 which is the S, dash, 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 which is the O, and dot, 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 which is the S again. So we're going to go through these programs. This is where all the work's being done in this Morse code sequence in this program. Then I'm going to delay one second, and then I'm going to go back and loop through and do it all over again. So let's come down and look at this Morse code sequence. This is where the work's being done. So in this Morse code sequence, basically what I'm doing is taking an input that is a character array, which could be a sentence of words, um, 
and stuff like that. So it can be anything, really. The input can be anything. But what I want it to be is dashes and dots. So that's what I'm expecting it to be. In fact, you'll see in the next subroutine that I call that it actually, if it's not a dot, it assumes it's a dash. So you can send any text you want, but if it's not a dot, it's going to send out a dash in its place in this case. So what I do is I knit my I, which is going to be my counter through my program, to zero. And then I come down here, and while my sequence is not equal to null, now the thing to remember about C is a character string is null terminated. So if you have five characters, it's actually going to be six characters because the six characters are going to be a null. So I always should have a null at the end of a character string. So what I'm going to do is while I'm not null, I'm going to leap through here, and then I'm going to call another routine called daughter dash. And I'm going to send it the character that I'm looking at. So my i is equal to zero, which is the first character in the array. If it's not equal to null, which it shouldn't be if it's the first character in the array, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say daughter dash, and I'm going to send that first character down to daughter dash. And then I'm going to increment, and I'm going to do this all while over again. So if I have more than a one character that needs to be sent out, I'm going to see that sequence one is going to be not equal to null, and I'm going to send it out as well, and then I'm going to increment. And I'm going to keep doing this until I run out of stuff to do. Then I'm going to wait for three times the dot length, which is the gap between letters. So what we're assuming here is I'm sending out a letter, which is going to be any combination of dots or dashes, and then I want to delay a little bit in between. So let's go on down a little bit and look at dot or dash. And this routine basically, it takes one character as input. So it comes down here, and the first thing it does, it says, if dot or dash, what I'm sending in, well, first of all, the first thing it does is turn the LED on. So it turns the LED on right here. Then it comes down here and it says, if I am a dot, I want to delay for the length of the dot delay, which you remember at the top I said that to 200 milliseconds. If I'm not that, I'm going to assume that I am a dash. So like I said before, if you send it random characters other than dot or dash, it's going to assume that it is a dash. And what it's going to do is it's going to delay three times the length of dot delay, which so it's going to be 600 milliseconds. So the dash is going to stay on longer, three times longer than what the dot is. Then after the delay is over, I'm going to turn the pin low, turn the LED off, and then I'm going to delay 200 milliseconds just to keep the letter separated. It makes it a little bit easier to understand when you're reading it. So from the very top, basically I'm calling Morse code sequence dot, dot, dot. It, one at a time, sends out the dots to dot or dash. So it comes down here and it does three times through this subroutine for, da for dots. It drops out of that routine. It comes back up here to dashes, goes through the same thing, comes down through here, sends it one character at a time to dot or dash. This time it's a dash, so it's going to wait three times 200 or 600 milliseconds, three times in a row, and it's going to go back up to the routine and do dots. And then after it does this, I'm going to wait one second, and I'm going to start it all over again. So that's the simplicity of this program. Basically, it's just a, uh, an array handler that sends out uh, one character at a time to a, another subroutine it looks if it's a dot or not a dot and then displays the LED, turns the LED on for a certain amount of time based upon that. So that's what you're seeing the Arduino doing um, right now. And let me go um, back over to the Arduino and you can just kind of think in your head <laughs> what the Arduino is doing through that program. So this program will be out in the show notes on the website and you can download it, install it and play with it. Now we're going to use this program as the base for the second program. The second program gets a little bit more complicated because now I have variable letters that I need to determine what the um, character or what the dot and character value is for each of those letters. So what an A is, what a B is, and obviously I know what an S is. S is three dots and O is uh, three dashes, but I, I cannot remember the other ones. Um, I never really knew Morse code and I still don't know Morse code even after typing it all in a little bit ago. So. What I'm going to do now is uh, load the other program. I'm going to go back to the laptop. I'm going to load the other program, and we're going to look at it as well. So let me get in here, and I'm going to hide this one. And it's the right one. Yes, yeah, the right one. So let me push this out. All right, it did not go. Let me see if I got the right serial port I might not I don't and then push it out again 
There it goes. And it's there. So now you see the Arduino. It's sitting here doing nothing at this moment. And what it's waiting for is input. So I'm going to walk through a little bit of the program and I'm going to show you input and what it does as well. So let's hop back over to the program. And let me go back to the top. And this program is going to take input from the serial port. So this is what we're going to, you're going to see that being set up right here. First of all, we see from the other program, LED pin 13, same as the other one. And we have dot delay just like the other one. Here comes the letters. So basically, uh, this is an array and it starts at zero and goes up to 25. So it's for 26 letters. And even though you see a capital A here, this is going to represent both a capital A and a lowercase a. And we'll show you that in the program and how that represents it. What you need to think of really is the dot and the dash is the A. And then for the B, it's a dash, dot, dot, dot. And then for the C, it's dot, it's dash, dot, dash, dot. And then for the D, it's dash, dot, dot. So that's how you got to think of this. Don't think of this as being an array of letters as much as an array of dashes, dashes and dots. So this is element zero. This is element one, element two. So that's how you got to think of this. And basically, I've gone through and I've defined, so I had to look up because I don't know Morse code, what all the different Morse codes are for A through Z. Now, in Morse code, there is no uppercase or lowercase. It's just A, B, C. So you'll see later on how I handled the uppercase, lowercase thing. As I, I, there was a bunch of different ways you could do this, and I just I handled it the quickest way I could think of off the top of my head. So the next array that I create, again, is a rate of 10 elements, and it's for one. Actually, I got it backwards. That's zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the, the five dashes is actually zero. I actually had these comments wrong. I'm gonna try to fix that before I stick it in the show notes. So this is another array. And again, don't think of it as being, well, in this case it would be, for the most part, um, zero would be equal to zero, one would be equal to one in this array. And then we come down to our setup and we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, set our LED pin to output. So pin 13 is set up to output. And this time we're going to use a serial port. So we're going to begin our serial input at 9600 pod. So we type in serial.begin and 9600 in parentheses. Now comes where the big change is really different from the other program. Remember the other program, I was just sending out dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. In this program, I'm going to take input. So basically what I'm doing is, I'm first of all defining this character uh, uh, value of ch. And you'll see right down here where I'm going to read that. So then I look at this serial port and I say, is it available? Is our characters available to be read? And if there is, then I can come down here and I'm going to set that CH I defined up here to equal to one character that I'm reading from the serial port. And just for debugging purposes, and I'll show you this whenever we run this, I'm going to send back to the serial console what I'm reading. Um, and what this is going to do is before it starts typing it out or dot, you know, the LED starts blinking, it's going to tell you what character it's sending. So this could be a good way to learn Morse code. If you combine it with an LCD shield instead of the serial port, you could learn Morse code, you know, fairly easily um, by watching what letters are going out. So next thing I do is say, is it a lowercase letter? And all I'm doing is saying, is the character value equal to or greater than lowercase a and less than or equal to lowercase z. Now, I'm not from sure how familiar you are with ASCII, but if you go look up ASCII on the internet, you're gonna see a table. And if you look at the table, it's from A to Z, it's, it's, it's your alphabet. So if it's equal to or greater than a lowercase a and less than or equal to a lowercase z, it's a lowercase a through z. So basically it's how you're checking to see what it is. So now I'm going to call the Morse code sequence uh, that I had before. And what this is going to do now, though, is it's going to use the letters array, and it's going to take the character value minus the capital A. Well, capital A is the first thing in, the, in there. So if I take a character value of, let's say, uh, a lowercase b minus a, the lowercase a, it's going to be equal to 1. Because, uh, for example, I'll go to the uppercase. I know uppercase a is 65. It's ASCII value 65. So I'm basically saying if I get 66 for uppercase b, I'm taking... 66 minus 65, which takes the array and makes it a B, which is a two or a one. It's a, it equals one, which is gonna see a B, uh, the B. So just like I did here with the um, 
A to Z. I'm doing uppercase A to Z. And I don't know why I remember this, but uppercase A is ASCII 65. I don't, I just don't know why I remember that. <laughs> I remember that for some reason uh, from a long time back. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'm going to send Morse code sequence, whatever the character was, which is you know obviously a capital A through capital Z minus a capital A. So basically I'm taking, taking 65 from the ASCII value that I read in into CH. And then I also check and, and I see if it's between zero and nine, which is doing the exact same thing in ASCII. It's zero through nine is um, basically in order, you know, through the ASCII, ASCII table. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, also notice here I use numbers, not letters, because now I'm taking the numbers array. Now, the next thing I look for is a space, because obviously if you're going to send out a sentence, you're going to have a space in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delay four times the dot length in between the words. So in this case, in between the words, it's going to be 800 milliseconds. And if there's nothing in this serial port, basically what I'm doing is I'm sending out a space or a, a blank line, assuming that the end of the sentence has reached, and that was for me to clear off the serial port we'll see later on. And then that's pretty much it. So all the arrow stuff that we had before the Morse code sequence is exactly the same. So where this could get confusing is you got to remember what is in this letters array is not a letter. It's, for example, A was, if I, take, if I was lowercase a minus lowercase a is equal to zero. So I come up to the top and the, for the zero element is dot dash. So I'm going to send out to that function that we used before dot dash and it's going to do just like the other program did. So if you come down here to Morse code sequence, I'm sending it dot dash. It's going to loop through here. The first time through, it's going to be equal to sequence zero is going to be equal to dot. It's going to go dot or dash. It's going to come in here to dot. I'm going to delay for 200 milliseconds and then turn the, the LED back off. And then I'm going to wait 200 milliseconds to go back. Then I'm going to do the dash. And it's going to come down here and it's going to turn the LED back on. It's going to say it's a it's not a it's not a dot, so it's going to delay uh, 600 milliseconds, three times the 200. Turn the LED back off, delay for 200 milliseconds, and come back up, and it's going to go back up to the next character that it reads, and we'll go do this all over again. So that may have just confused you. I probably went through that a little too fast, but if you walk through the program, um, I have commented this program fairly well, and you can walk through and see what it's doing. Now, I have this program loaded, and what I want to do is I want to show you what it does. Now, I will tell you that earlier when I was testing this, for some reason, my serial test on in the Arduino is not working. So I'm going to use another program to do that. That's on my Mac. It basically does the exact same thing as what um, the, uh, the program on the Arduino did. So let me bring that up here. And I'm using a program called iSerialTerm. And let me connect to the Arduino. Actually, let me go back over to the computer. See what I'm doing this way. I'm going to do USB modem. And my speed is 9600. And I'm going to connect. So now I'm connected. Now I'm going to send out our favorite, Hello World. And I don't want to put a character turn on it, so I'm going to leave it off just like that. And I'm going to send. Now, I'm going to show you the, what the screen's doing. You see right here, it's scrolling up where it says H-E, and now it's an L, and L, and then it comes up and it says O. There's a space. There's W. There's O. And it'll, it'll go through the whole hello world. And what I'm seeing on the Arduino, I'm going to switch over to the Arduino and do this again and show you what it does. The Arduino is sending out this in Morse code. So now it's done. So the screen blanked out because it's done. So let me hop back over to the Arduino itself. There's the Arduino, and it's done right now. And I'm going to click on the send button one more time. There it is. And what you see it doing right now is sending out hello world. Like I said, I don't know Morse code, so I cannot confirm that's what it's doing, but I did look earlier, and if I put in the stuff correctly into the array, it is sending out hello world right now. It's on, it's on the L in the, in the world right now. There's the D, and it's done. All right, so what I'm going to do is send out a little bit longer one.
All right, there we go. I'm gonna send out hello world. This is a demo of sending Morse code with the Arduino. And I'm gonna actually take you back to the Arduino because it's gonna take a while. And I'll let you know where it's at in that process. So you're back to the Arduino. And I'm gonna click on send. Right now it's on the H and the E. L, L, O, space, W, O, R, L, D, space, this, the T, I'm sorry, H, I, S, space, I, S, space, A, space, D, E, M, O, space, O, F, space, A, oh no, I'm sorry, it's S, E, N, D, I, N, G, space, you can see this gets very tedious. <laughs> it would be forever if I had to learn Morse code. And it's up in the O of a Morse now. There's an R, S, E, space, C, O, D, E, wow, space, W, I, T, H, space, T, H, E, space, A, R, D, U, I, N, O, done. So yeah, that was very tedious. I should have made that a lot shorter. Uh, I wasn't thinking when I, earlier I was just playing with short sentences. I uh, should have tried that beforehand. So anyways, that was setting out Morse code. So let's think about what some practical uses of this might be. First of all, it'd be a good way to learn Morse code. However, most people don't learn Morse code anymore. I don't even think it's required by most radio licenses anymore. I think a few of them might require it. But uh, in general, I think they've removed that Morse code uh, requirement. But uh, if you would, I don't know, put a brighter LED on it so you can read it farther away. Uh, something that would be fun for the do me for another another episode is to read the Morse code. So maybe set it up and uh, allow it to read Morse code from a distance of some kind. That may be another fun, pro fun project to do. You could definitely put on brighter LEDs. Um, I was looking around for some projects to do, and there was, I saw one that used a bunch of bright LEDs, like strobe LEDs, for this. So it would be good at a distance. Um, but, you know, this is just a fun way to learn and play with the Arduino and learn a little bit of Morse code. You know, it's, it's not around a lot very much anymore. So uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. I mean, this show, again, tonight was supposed to be fast and short. We've had a couple of long ones, you know, almost a little too long. So I wanted to, like, do one that's a little bit shorter. Uh, I don't like taking up too much of everybody's time. So this is all this stuff's going to be out on the show notes page, and you can get to the show notes by going to techzen.tv. And then going to Let's Make It, and every episode is out there with show notes. In fact, you can get show notes for all of our shows out there. And uh, if you're watching this live, do you know that you can actually download us by uh, – you can download us almost everywhere now. If you're, You can download right to your iPhone, your iPad. You can do it through iTunes. You can go to any of the podcasting directories pretty much and sign up and get automatic downloads. This is available in both audio and video, although I think video is probably the most compelling considering like, uh, what we're doing with it. But it's definitely available on audio. It's also like on Stitcher Radio. Um, most of the uh, internet radio networks carry us as well. Uh, we're on TiVo. You can get us on Roku. Uh, we're on Xbox now. You can get us on Zunes if you really want to. Uh, we're on BlackBerry. So we're you can get our shows pretty much anywhere. And you know the best way to get it is to go out and subscribe, get regular downloads. Uh, if you like watching it on YouTube, we definitely have a YouTube channel for every one of our shows. Each show has their own YouTube channel. Uh, best to go out there and subscribe, and you get regular updates with that as well. Now, if you're not listening to us live, we record this show every Wednesday, or I'm sorry, every Tuesday now at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can watch us live as we record it, and you can see all the mistakes that we make 
through all this. Plus, there's a chat room you can join, and you can chat with us. And uh, before the show, we go live, and after the show, we stay live for a little bit and answer questions, things like that. It's kind of a little fun thing to do, and we can interact with you during the show as well if you come out and uh, sign up and, and you know, get on the live chat with us as well. All right, that is pretty much it for this week. Um, next week, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing yet. I'm just trying to find cool, fun projects out there to do. But if you have suggestions, the best thing to do is go to our show page and uh, you can either send us an email, or you can send us a Twitter. Uh, there's a phone number out there you can contact us with. You can, if you want to send us a video, you know, record it and set it up uh, on to like Ustream and send it to us. And uh, I'm sorry, not Ustream, but uh, YouTube and we send us a link to it. Just don't send us a video and email. It's probably too big, and it's better if you send us that. But you may see your video on a huge feature show. We could do that as well. So um, sorry about some of the technical problems we had tonight. We're switching has some issues and a few audio issues here and there. So we're, we're redoing our studio um, and rearranging things a little bit. So we had a few technical difficulties. But that comes with uh, making things better, hopefully. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on Let's Make It.